to stay. Um, of course, 11 years ago to this date, the Affordable Care Act legislation was signed. And as part of that was a $100 million grant award to the Ohio State University Radiation Oncology Department, which I was very honored to be part of, very competitive process. But um, certainly this grant award was transformational for Ohio State, but the legislation itself was hugely transformational for Ohio State and the entire country. So I'd really like to take this opportunity to describe what type of impact this legislation and grant has had on the institution and Please. cancer patients in general. So the, the, really the way we view this is that this is a war on cancer. And you're our commander in chief, we're your lieutenants, but first and foremost, we're servants to our cancer patients to give them the best care possible. So we thank you for all of your support. Now, if you'll notice, Mr. President, we're standing by what we call the bell of hope. So let me explain kind of the significance, if I could, Mr. President. Typically, about 70% of all cancer patients receive radiation at some point during their treatment. And um, typically, these treatment courses can last up to six to eight weeks per patient. It's a long course of treatment. And um, the patients go through a lot during the course of treatment. So the tradition here in our department is the very last treatment uh, the patients will bring them down. And it's symbolic of several things, Mr. President. It's symbolic of bravery. It's symbolic of the re resiliency of the patients. They're overcoming long odds here, long, long odds. And finally, it's symbolic of hope, hope for the future. So um, this bell right here means a lot, not only to us, but our patient population. So, so really, thank, thanks for letting me share that with you. Well, Doc, I, uh, unfortunately, I'm pretty familiar with the bell. Not here, but uh, my son, when he came home, he decorated war hero from Iraq. Uh, was diagnosed with uh, stage four glioblastoma. And you know then it's only a matter of months, not if you're going to live in most cases. And uh, I had a chance to visit, literally, the president put me in charge of the so-called moonshot. Yes. Because I had said when I announced I wasn't going to seek election that year, last year of our administration, that I, my only regret, because through the press would ask me to have any regrets, <laughs> so I said ahead of time, my only regret was that I wasn't going to be the president who was going to preside over cancer, uh, the end of cancer as we know it. Not all cancer then, but as we know it. And uh, the president allowed me to do this moonshot. And one of the things that I have to think you should be given credit for is the use of radiation is a very complex thing. And uh, my son, anyway, my son underwent it. And, uh, but one of the things that is happening, as a doc can tell you, radiation is a complicated deal. And now there's a lot of talk about using protons that do not do as much damage. Radiation kills all the bad things, but also kills any good thing it comes in contact with. And so uh, that and immunotherapy yes. that you're working on yes. now yes. are, I think, hold the key. One of the things that I want to do, and we talked about, Joyce and I have talked about it, is, you know, the Defense Department, Doc, has a provision, has an outfit called DARPA. DARPA is a separate agency within the Defense Department, which is a $300 billion plus department, uh, operation that works on things completely separate from what the rest of the military is doing to deal with the problems of the future. They're the guys that came up with the whole idea of the internet. They're the ones that did the internet. Al Gore was a great guy, but he didn't do the internet. And they're also the guy, the, the folks that uh, came with geoposition, a whole range of things. I like to see, I'm convinced, after we did the Bo Biden initiative, the last thing we did in Congress when I was there as, as Vice President, is that I think 
if we can focus on and make the kind of investments that your companies can't make, they're not going to make a $200 million investment here, for example, a new form of, uh, you know, therapy. And so I hope we're going to be able to convince the Congress, I'll be introducing this before the year is out probably, I'd like to have an ARPA, the health of ARPA-H, instead of just DARPA, defense application. This is going to be for the Department of Health and Education, Health at NIH, to, so they have a completely separate entity to be able to do all the experimental things. And I say to the press here, if we don't do something, for example, about Alzheimer's, every single bed in American hospitals today will be occupied by someone with Alzheimer's within 20 years, every single bed. But this guy and his colleagues around the country have a chance to deal with cancer in a way that they've never thought about before. And this is one of the great hospitals to live. I want to thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So, Mr. President, this is a linear accelerator vault. This is where we treat our cancer patients. And this is where the ACA grant really did help us out tremendously in terms of improving our technology in the department. So this patient here, this is a, a dummy that's set up for a brain radiation, a glioblastoma, brain metastases. And these types of tumors are insidious. They're among the most aggressive of all known human tumors because, number one, they're cloaked in invisibility. You can't see the microscopic extensions of these tumors using conventional MRI scans. So just tracking them is very difficult. They're often located next to very critical structures, too. So the challenge is to give the tumor a high dose while protecting normal tissues. So these types of systems, like the very edge system, is one of the most cutting edge in terms of delivering high doses to the tumor but protecting normal tissues. And this represents a significant advance in the treatment of these types of tumors from a technological standpoint. And as a result, the patients with these types of tumors who are treated in our department have had steadily improving outcomes. Although Still, this is a tough, these tumors are tough to conquer, very yeah. tough. So uh, we're also working on drugs, creative drugs and immune therapies in combination with radiation to potentiate its effects. And um, really are starting to see some promising signs for some of these tumors. And this how is, how uh, difficult, for example, in glioblastoma to break the blood-brain barrier? Yes, that's probably the toughest challenge to deliver an effective drug. You could have the most effective drug in a petri dish, but to overcome the blood-brain barrier is a difficult proposition. So the best drug therapies often fall short of glioblastomas. And that brings me to a new technology that has emerged as a consequence of this ACA grant, Mr. President, which is right behind me, the Mobitron. So Mobitron, this is the North America's very first flash Mobitron device. And what I mean by flash therapy, Mr. President, is super high dose rates of radiation that are about 10,000 fold more powerful than conventional radiation. That device is about 10,000 times more powerful than this conventional radiation. And the entire treatment course in theory, Mr. President, be delivered in less than a tenth of a second. Believe it, yeah, six to eight weeks of treatment condensed into less than a tenth of a second. So, Mr. President, we're working right now to develop the safety, kind of making this as safe as possible for use in human subjects. We're working in partnership with our vet school to conduct clinical trials on dogs, cats, and horses with various types of cancers. We have one of the best schools in the world here at Ohio State. Um, dogs are predisposed to certain types of gliomas, brain tumors, so it's a good model to use, and oftentimes the current therapies aren't very effective. So if this pans out, Mr. President, this would be a game changer for all the cancer. The accuracy is? Accuracy is within a million. And, uh, yeah. and by the way, dogs may help cure cancer. Not a joke. Dogs are able to, they're using dogs now because their olfactory glands are 400 times what a human is. 
to smell cancer in people's legs and people's bodies. Not a joke. It's a fascinating thing. Sir, is it comforting or is it hopeful or more painful for you to hear about cancer developments like this? It's, it's mostly hopeful because I don't want to see anybody go through what my son went through. One of the things you should be aware of, there's probably more soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines coming home with brain cancers than any time in American history because of exposure. Some of you have read the book Burn Pits. There's a lot of research that still has to be done to determine whether or not exposure to these toxins in the air have had something to do with it. Also, you have an awful lot of these IEDs have caused Trump brain trauma in other ways as well. So it really is something that I'm going to encourage us to spend a lot more time in the government focusing on. A little bit like, you know, it used to have to, with Agent Orange, you'd have to prove that even though you were drenched in it, it rained on you, that whatever your problem was was a consequence of that. It was very hard to prove. I finally got a bill passed in the senator saying, if you were drenched, you're automatically assumed, whatever your problem is related to that. Same thing now with the IED. If you were near a concussion, you have a problem, it's assumed the government has responsibility for it. And, but there's a lot going on, and the doc could tell you more. But one of things that really excites me, doc, is the idea that we're moving into potential immunotherapy initiatives that, uh, what they did with Bo, they injected an adenovirus into the brain. Exactly. And uh, it, uh, they, were, they were giddy initially at all of the human body coming in to eat up the virus, but it just kept going, and because there had been some damage from radiation on the blood vessel, it, things got, it didn't work, but there's real hope for people. There's Mr. Hope. President, with this flash therapy, there's m much more synergism with immune therapy than with conventional. Yeah, I agree with that. I, not that I agree, I don't mean like, yeah. as if I matters what I agree. Yeah. And our proton center, which treat our first patient in 2023, we'll have flash capabilities. So we'll combine the benefits of protons, flash, and immunotherapy together. So explain the difference between a proton and, and radiation. Yes. Going Great through. question. Great question. It's really important. Yes. So with conventional radiation therapy, like this unit right behind you, sir, this produces high-level X-ray energy radiation that's penetrated goes through normal tissues as well as tumor. So everything is treated, normal tissues and tumor together. With proton therapy, the dose stops right at the tumor, so you're not treating normal tissues. So it's a major advancement in the treatment of cancers. And treating normal tissue sometimes is a very bad thing. It also, you can destroy the normal tissue. You destroy the cancer, you hit that, but it goes through the cancer, and destroys whatever is beyond it, not just in the brain, but wherever it is. And so that's why uh, I, uh, I think some of the, a few of the Nobel laureates on my cancer facility are, were argued that we should get, to, we should start to focus on proton. And because it, it, it doesn't have the same application, but it does less damage when it occurred, when there is damage done. And, uh, but uh, it really is, one of my regrets becoming president, I had to give up uh, the Biden cancer mission because I couldn't raise any money for it. But we proposed, there's literally six Nobel laureates on the board, a group, a group of people that are like the doc. I, try, I was almost called you to ask you, it's a long story. But, and, but it is something that there's a lot. These guys are on the edge of so many things. Think about it. Jimmy Carter was declared basically gone five times. Now he's in truck now, but it's amazing that, you know, it's a little bit like, that's uh, why so I should never give up hope. When the breakthrough comes, it just comes through, not planned. It's just, whoa, we got it. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Mr. President, do you believe you have the political capital to make changes on gun measures right now? I hope so. 
I don't know. I haven't done the accounting yet. 